everyone. Uh, welcome to our second page of this Kreutzer Etude, number 28. I have three tips for you for the second page as you continue your journey towards feeling comfortable with these etudes. So the first tip that I would like to go over with you guys uh, involves measure 41 and it goes through measure 45. These are uh, two measures that are rather similar. So let's go over these. Um, oh, one quick thing to mention is in measure 40, we have a half note on um, the E. And I think that it would be a good idea to be on a fourth finger there. So we, in measure 40, we have So when we get to 41, make sure you actually shift to second position so you have a good opportunity to vibrate with your fourth finger, which is no one's favorite finger to vibrate, but that's okay. So get up there and vibrate. And again, this is a really easy place to rush because we, we're excited to get on to all the 30 second notes. So make sure you're really counting one and two and three and four. And, and then just in case you haven't gotten the errata in the all state, there should be a dot on the trill note in measure 42. So make sure you put a dot on that quarter note because it's missing in the all state edition. So this is a dotted quarter. I'll play it without the trill once. One and two and three and four and. It's also tempting to rush that triplet to go but try not to sneak it in. It's really, it's worth a whole 16th note, right? Actually, it's worth a whole eighth note. It's worth a whole eighth note. So make sure that you play that um, carefully. One and two and three and four and. So I'll play that whole passage for you from 41. One and two. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three. The second spot that I would like to address on this second page of Kreutzer is measure 45. And the nice thing about this is you can take these ideas and also apply it to the similar passage on the first page. To practice this, and this one actually is I think a little easier than the one on the first page because before we were on the D and G strings, now we're on the A and D. We have this um, where we're accompanying ourselves with uh, a counter melody on the D string. Right? So to practice that, practice it separate voices, but finger both. So first I'll actually practice the lower voice and try to use vibrato if you can. That might not be easy at first, but you know, so do it without vibrato, but then try to add vibrato as you get comfortable. And then do just the upper voice. And if you can do both voices comfortably, then adding them back together should be easier. Um, also remember, especially when you're about to do the trill, don't press too hard. The harder you press, the harder it is to get your fingers to cooperate with you. So think almost, you, you play, play the double stop and, and lighten up almost enough to get up to a harmonic to see how light you can be. As you place your third finger and you'll have an easier time of executing the trill. So this is the last tip for this second page of the Kreutzer Etude. Congratulations to making it all the way to the end of this etude with me. We're going to play from measure 52 and we're going to work on one of these 16th note passages. Now um, in the errata for the Allstate um, materials, they have now told us that we're going to do these in two beats per bow. So if it's not marked in your part, make sure that you're doing this slurring every two beats. So I'll demonstrate. And 
and then from measure 54, it's already split two beats per bow. So just the measures 52 and 53 are also that way. And so what I'd like to discuss in this is getting a nice even sound and also opening up the hand to get these, um, these tenths comfortable because that's one of the harder things is the intervals of um, uh, the ninths and the tenths that we have in this little passage. So opening the hand here, making sure, well, the first, uh, in, in measure 52, you can actually shift to second position and then reach, reach back for your A. And now here we have, so as you reach, you can release the first finger, but try to keep your hand just really nice and open by opening the bass joints. If you just try to reach and move around a lot, you're gonna not be as accurate. So here, Try to actually do a whole step shift. And then here, again, if you feel this opening, really make sure you're just thinking about keeping your bass knuckles closer to the fingerboard. If you reach this way, it won't, you won't reach, especially if you have small hands like myself. You need to make sure that you're really opening the bass joints to get. But if you're thinking, well, my hands are too small, I have small hands, and if you can, you, if you can reach even further, then you know, you know that you have the ability And then the last thing I would like to suggest is as you practice this spot, um, take advantage of being able to even break the, the slurs further. So I would practice it maybe in groups of two. And again, try to really make sure that your hand's opening up. Try to keep your fingers as relaxed and curved as you can. And so after you've done that, then go to four, four notes per bow. And just feel nice and comfortable. And then when you get to um, as it's bowed regularly, which will be just every two beats, and that is the new bowing. Make sure you're just using your entire bow and feeling comfortable and confident as you go from the frog to the tip. Thank you for listening and uh, watching today, everybody, and um, I hope this has been useful to you. If there is something else that you would like to see, um, all region and all state connected, or even something else, please uh, shoot us a, a message in the email uh, link below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, and again, stay well and keep practicing.